member's statement. The member for Whitby. So thank you, Speaker. The Ontario government is investing an additional $202 million annually in the province's homelessness prevention program and Indigenous supportive housing program. Now, Speaker, this new funding builds on the government's investment of nearly $4.4 billion over the past three years to grow and enhance community and supportive housing. As part of this funding, the region of Durham will be receiving $18.6 million. This is an increased speaker of more than $7.1 million, or about 62 per cent over the last year. Durham Regional Chair John Henry, who participated in a recent announcement made by Durham-based government members, had this to say. This investment will help fund supportive housing programs, community outreach services, and housing-focused shelter programs, critical supports that address the needs of Durham Region's vulnerable residents. Once again, Speaker, Durham-based government MPPs standing up for residents in the region of Durham. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Next member's statement, the member for Spadina, Fort York. Thank you, Madam Speaker. The Ontario NDP leader and I share the honour of representing Little Portugal in our writings. And this year, the Portuguese Canadian community is celebrating the 70th year of immigration to Canada. On May 13, 1953, the first Portuguese pioneers arrived in Canada from the Azores. In the 70 years since that first journey, the dependents of those first pioneers have gone on to achieve greatness, building a strong and diverse Canada that Portuguese Canadians proudly call home. A volunteer organizing committee uh, of community leaders has been working hard for it to organize a year-long program to honour Portuguese pioneers. I would like to thank Matthew Correa for inviting me to the first event, a celebratory, a celebratory luncheon last Sunday, benefiting the Magellan Community Foundation. And I'd also like to thank Manuel da Costa, who is chairing the foundation to build a long-term care home for Portuguese seniors. This coming weekend on Saturday, May 13th, is the Canadian Portuguese uh, Walk of Fame induction ceremony, followed shortly afterward by the unveiling of a monument to the Portuguese pioneers. This, and this coming Sunday, join the Portuguese Festa at Nathan Phillips Square with food, music and performances by international recording artists Pedro Abrunosa and Barbara Bandera. Also coming up, the Due West Festival in uh, Little Portugal, in Little Portugal organized by Annabella Taborda and the board of the Little Portugal BIA. And the highlight of the year is always the third, will be this year's 35th annual Leo. That's 90 seconds. Thank you very much. Next member statement. The member for flamborough Glenbrook. Thank you and good morning, Madam Speaker. I want to take the opportunity this morning to recognize the work and the value volunteers bring to our communities. They make our communities stronger, more vibrant, and more caring. The fact that volunteers offer their time and skills to support others is a testament to their kindness and their compassion. They give up themselves and don't expect anything in return. Let me speak for a moment about an amazing volunteer organization in my riding of Flamborough Glanbrook, and that is the Rotary Club of Flamborough. This organization supports dozens of causes in the watered down Flamborough area, everything from scholarships for students to Christmas baskets for seniors. This past weekend, I spoke at the Rotary Club's Family Fun Run, where all the funds raised supported food for kids in Flamborough. The Rotary Organization and so many other service clubs are made up of selfless volunteers. I also want to encourage the many organizations that benefit from the hard work of their volunteers to nominate exceptional individuals in their communities for an Ontario Service Award to acknowledge those who go above and beyond for the service of others. And I want to offer my sincere gratitude to the tens of thousands of volunteers who every day make Ontario a better place to live. Thank you. Thank you. Next member statement, the member for Ottawa Centre. Thank you, Speaker. Who makes politics happen? That's a question people often ask. And some folks assume that it's us in this building arguing over policy, but people who've earned a seat in this place know differently. Behind us are volunteers and donors, families and friends. We may often get the limelight, 
But those are the folks, Speaker, that build the state. And my friend Don Smith, who we lost last week before his 80th birthday, this guy, Speaker, was a first-class stage builder. But for me, he was a man of mystery because he rarely talked about himself. But Don was a guy who in his life had been a journalist, a city councillor in the great city of Thunder Bay, and a longtime assistant to a federal member of parliament. He was a guy focused on making relationships better. He was there for two life partners who died from degenerative diseases. He was loyal to them, and he was loyal to all of us. And he was also fun. Don liked to square dance and waltz, he lived by a policy of eating a piece of chocolate a day, and he was very active in his local housing co-op. I will never forget Don. They rarely make people like him, but all of us know people like this in our community. So I want to today salute Don Smith to a life well lived, to a community well served. New Democrats are going to be remembering Don this Friday at 464 Metcalf Street at 6 p.m. If you know Don and you have a story to share, Come break bread with us. Let's remember this extraordinary man and his extraordinary life. Rest in power, my friend. Thank you. Next member statement, the member for Thornhill. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Recently, I joined Minister Mulroney to announce that we are one step closer to getting shovels in the ground on the Young North subway extension. The new subway extension is going to bring some much-needed relief for not only Thornhill but the GTA and York region. Madam Speaker, did you know that Thornhill was the original transit-oriented community? So if we look back as early as the 19th century, Thornhill served as a critical juncture for transportation and was the natural pit stop for travelers moving north. Uh, this included American loyalists who were fleeing American invasion during the War of 1812, and in 1885, Toronto's first commuter railway, the Metropolitan Radial Railway York Simcoe, was opened in Thornhill and stopped right there. So as a key stopping point for travellers, Thornhill became a hub for social and economic activity. And I'm so delighted that this historic legacy of Thornhill is able to continue through the Young North Subway Extension. This project will undoubtedly bring uh, local economies bolstered, bring jobs, and eliminate so many of the buses on Young Street, helping reduce greenhouse emissions and congestion. And as a resident of the original transit-oriented community, I look forward to the new subway helping the people of Thornhill, Richmond Hill, and future generations of those in York Region get where they need to go faster and a more efficient way. Thank you. Thank you. Next member statement, the member for Windsor West. Thank you, Speaker. Constituents in Windsor West and across the province are feeling unbearable financial pressure every single day. The cost of everything has gone up, and this Conservative government does nothing to rein in corporations that are price-gouging Ontarians. Families are feeling it at the grocery store, gas pump, heating bills, auto insurance, housing costs, and more. Parents are juggling multiple jobs and still struggle to put food on the table. Kids are going to school hungry. Food bank usage across the province is at a record high, and the number of people accessing food banks continues to climb. Recipients of social assistance can't keep up with the sharp rent increases or the cost of putting food on the table. People with disabilities are living far below the poverty line or are getting pushed into deeper poverty because of government policy. The Conservatives choose to leave people living in legislated poverty. And seniors on fixed incomes can't keep up with rising costs either. They are also increasing, increasingly accessing food banks. In Windsor, residents are paying some of the highest auto and home insurance rates in the province, yet this government won't address postal code discrimination in the insurance industry. Rental housing costs continue to skyrocketing because the Conservatives cut rent control. My constituents deserve a government that works hard to make life easier for them, rather than implement policies that make life more difficult. My NDP colleagues and I will continue to fight for Ontarians to fight for better, because better is possible. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Scarborough, Rouge Park. So, Mr. S Mr. Speaker, May is the month of genocide remembrance for the Tamil community. As a young boy who survived the 21st century's most brutal genocide, it is my honor to rise today to acknowledge Tamil Genocide Education Week, which will take place from May 12th to May 18th in Ontario, Canada, and across the world. 
Bill 104, which I introduced in 2019 and was passed unanimously in this legislature in 2021, recognizing and marking the significance of educating about the Tamil genocide. The height of genocide took place in May 2009, the Mulli Waikal massacre. Tragically, the Tamil people have faced systematic structural genocide since Sri Lanka's independence, and it is still ongoing. Mr. Speaker, the recent events have revealed that the Sri Lankan state's targeted destruction of places of worship and place of significance to Tamil people accounts to cultural genocide. These temples have been family deity temples to many of my constituents from Scarborough, Rouge Park, and across Canada. Mr. Speaker, Tamil Canadians living in Ontario continue to ex experience the impact of intergenerational trauma from the genocide, making Tamil Genocide Education Week Act more important now than ever. On May 18th, the Tamil community around the world will come together to commemorate Tamil Genocide Remembrance Day. I encourage everyone to learn about the Tamil Genocide, and together we can say, never again. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Sarnia Lambton. Thank you, Speaker. Well, thank you, Speaker. And uh, Children and Youth and Care Day in Ontario is just around the corner, and I'd like to take this opportunity to acknowledge the efforts of young people and their stories and experiences. This year's Forget Me Not campaign will highlight the stories of young people and their resilience in overcoming obstacles. Children and youth in Ontario's child welfare system deserve to be recognized and celebrated. This campaign is another way to remind local communities and government service providers that young Ontarians deserve to have critical supports in place, which is why our government recently invested $170 million over the next two years for youth leaving care through the new Ready, Set, Go program. Speaker, children and youth are the future of this great province and this country, and we need to ensure that they are equipped with the tools they need to be successful. It is also important to recognize the hard work of all the Children's Aid Societies and their staff. In particular, a special shout-out to my local Children's Aid Society of Sarnia and Lampton, led by their Executive Director, Don Flegel, who will be with us later today. As part of the Forget Me Not campaign, the Ontario Association of Children's Aid Societies and Children's Aid Foundation of Canada would like to invite all members to their reception today at 5 p.m. in Room 228. I hope to see you all there. Thank you, Speaker. Member Statements, the member for Renfrew, Nipissing, Pembroke. Thank you, Speaker. Today is Ontario's fourth annual day of action on litter. The sad reality is we should never have had to have a day of action on litter because littering is entirely preventable. Speaker, litter doesn't happen by accident. It only happens because someone chooses to drop a coffee cup along the sidewalk or toss a pop can out the window as they're traveling along a rural road. It doesn't happen without the conscious decision by someone to do so. Speaker, we can start by taking personal responsibility. Litter is, littering is one of those things that you might have already guessed I despise deeply. It's something that as little children we were taught not to do and something my wife Vicky and I have passed on to our children. I recall many times when our children would come home from school with candy wrappers in their pockets because the last thing they were going to do was drop that wrapper on the ground. Speaker, litter is not only a visible blight on this beautiful land we've been blessed with, it is very harmful to our environment and dangerous for pets that may consume it. However, it is gratifying to see concerted community efforts and litter pickup days all across Ontario this time of year to remove what has been deposited through the winter months. Having said that, it would be much better if it had never found its way onto our landscape at all. We should all make a pledge to take our individual and collective responsibility seriously, because Ontario is not only ours to discover, it is ours to keep beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes our members' statements for this morning. Introduction of visitors.